looking like beach balls at the moment. But <laughs> what's what's gone so right at the start of the season? Are you feeling in a really rich vein of form? No, um, to put it simply, uh, I was actually pretty nervous uh, leading into the first round of games. I think I actually haven't played that much cricket over the last six months, which is a bit unusual for me. I think the last couple of years I've been going season to season, so I actually had a lot of time off, sort of nearly six months off from playing, which, uh, yeah, it was really unusual. So I was quite nervous heading into that first game. Um, but look, at the end of the day, I was just happy to contribute to the team's success and, and to score a few runs as well was, was just a nice touch. Have you got those? Sorry. <laughs> One. A really pleasing as well to find me after six months or so without a lot of cricket to not just be hitting them but clearing the fence regularly and, and, and striking pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I think um, I've been playing for a, a wee while now and, and I think it's sort of having faith in the work that I've done during the pre-season and, and knowing that that's how, how I'm going to try and play my cricket wherever I'm playing, whenever I'm playing. So it was nice, as you say, to, to see them like beach balls. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, I think the work really paid off, I think, during the pre-season. Have you got the nerves out now? Uh, for now, but look, I, I always get nerves. I think they're a really important part of the game and shows that I care about, at what, about what I'm doing. So, yeah, look, I'm sure throughout the season I'll still have a few butterflies going on. <laughs> you come out of the weekend one and one. Do you take more learnings out of the loss than the win? How do you see it? Yeah, look, I think it was, it was disappointing not to go 2-0 two, two and o, uh, from the weekend. I thought the Renegades backed up really well on the Sunday and it was disappointing not to not to get the win, but we probably knew that we didn't play our best cricket, especially after Saturday where we did play really well. Um, we knew we were probably 20 runs short on a, on a really great wicket out at Karen Old Noble. So, yeah, look, I think we will certainly talk a lot about uh, what went wrong on Sunday, but also there were a lot of things that we did right as well. So that's really encouraging for the group and different people standing up. So, again, looking forward to another big weekend ahead. What do you think were some of those things you were doing right out there? Oh, look, I actually think bowling-wise we actually went OK. I mean, I know they, they chased it down, but we took it right to the end of the match, which was important. I think we've got to keep fighting because cricket's a funny game and, and interesting things can happen. So I thought we did that really well. And, and different people stood up with the bat again. Bridget Patterson was fantastic uh, out there in the middle, sort of just being aggressive and playing her style of cricket, which is something that I know as a team we've spoken about being brave and, and having a crack and backing yourself. So there's certainly a lot of positives to come out of it. How did you make Stefani Taylor's opening games for you? Well, gee, she took a look at with her first ball, so it's not a bad start for a first game in blue. But look, she's she's a great competitor, and I thought she fitted in really well with the group. And look, it was sad to see her go after only two games. It would be nice to have her for a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, look, she's she was great to have around the group. Her experience as well. She knows her game inside out, so she was a really valuable contributor to the game. Mm. Lauren Winfield comes in now. Can you? You've played with her in England. Can you give us an insight into what we can expect from her? Yeah, the first time I actually came across Lauren, she goes by the nickname Moose, um, in terms of she can moose the ball. So she can whack a long ball, which um, for me is really exciting to have someone else with a bit of a power game. She's probably slightly different to Stefani, but uh, is a really aggressive batter at the top of the order and is certainly going to add a bit more firepower to our batting lineup. So, you know, if we can really get going, there could be some big runs on score. Can you get a better indication of where you sit after this weekend? back-to-back -back games and, and having play, getting to play Hobart as well, who started so well? Yeah, I think so. It was great. I mean, as well to see the other teams and how they went. Obviously, everyone's gone one and one apart from Hobart, who are probably the surprise package this season. And, and we always knew that they were they were through. Even last year, I thought they were really unlucky not to not to go a little bit better. But it was. It was great to see the standard. And, and look, we know this competition is going to be really close, so every every game is going to count. Now, good now to have this weekend televised nationally. And I mean. The standalone really gets to take centre stage this week. Yeah, look, it's fantastic. I mean, I'm not too sure about the 9:40 a.m. start. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, what the old sleep dust out the eyes. But look, it is. It's fantastic. The opportunity to be a standalone competition is fantastic. And we saw the crowds at the televised games during the weekend. North Sydney Oval looked an absolute treat, and there was great crowds in there. So hopefully, we can get similar numbers at to AB Field in Brisbane. Have you noticed a difference in enthusiasm around the group this year with the, the standalone? Yeah, I think so. I think the girls have sort of been itching for this to sort of be standalone. Like we've absolutely loved the time sharing it with the boys and I guess the camaraderie that goes with sharing it alongside the strikers and the other big bash teams. But it is nice to be able to stand on our own two feet and to show the product is valuable and you know is worthy enough of standing on its own two feet. Close like Stefani and Lady Boom Boom for want of a better name <laughs> coming in. Does this have a or will it have a sort of trickle down or trickle up effect into 
the standard of international cricket, do you think, like oh, just playing in this competition? Massively, and I think it's already happened the last four or five years. You've seen the, the improvement in the women's game around the world, and certainly with players like Lady Boom Boom, um, Nita Dar coming in for the Sydney Thunder, I think it's just fantastic, and it shows that there's players from around the world. It's not just your players from New Zealand, England. It's you know South Africans, West Indies, Indians we've had last year as well, and it just shows that the game is really going global and that the superstars are around the world. Will the 100 heighten that further, do you think? Yeah, I, I do. I think there's a lot of hype around the 100 and, and really excited to be a part of that next year. It's a obviously slightly different format, but again, I think it's another opportunity to show the women's game out there and you know put our foot forward. Did you hesitate at all in signing on to the 100? Or this is an exciting step forward for cricket? Uh, no, not really. I think it was almost similar to the WBBL, with it, something new and exciting and you know, really privileged to be a part of something that's going to be new for not only women's cricket but cricket in general. It's a new format. Obviously the rules are still being ironed out, which is exciting. I'm not too sure about the 10 balls from one end, but um, we have to, to work up the loads for that one. But look, it's a fantastic opp opportunity and the ECB have really pushed hard and promoted it well. So, uh, you know, there's a bit of time yet before that competition, but really looking forward to being involved. So that was your last yeah. slow winter, obviously. Just yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember the last time I had a pre-season. It was probably four or five years ago, so I was about due. But yeah, look, certainly the next couple of years are going to be really busy. There's obviously T20 World Cup next year. Then there's another 50 over World Cup uh, next year back in New Zealand, which is going to be massive for a lot of girls um, that get to partake in that. And then obviously Commonwealth Games as well. There sort of seems to be more and more in the calendar, which is fantastic. I think that's what I've always wanted is to be playing more cricket. And it's you know it is. It's around the world. It's different opportunities, different competitions. Career, striker's career run on the weekend. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I actually didn't know that until you sort of said that. Um, yeah, again, it's, a, it's it's really humbling. I thought one of the blokes might have beat me to it. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm, I'm extremely proud to represent the strikers and have done for a couple of years now and to be able to reach that milestone first male or female is, you know, it's, yeah, it is, it's humbling, but hopefully there's a few more runs in the tank um, this season. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, with a standalone, I can't give them a bit of ribbing. But uh, look, no, I think it's great. The great thing about the Adelaide Strikers is it really is one club, and I'm sure hopefully one of the boys will be there soon. With Stefani Taylor um, out for the next few rounds, uh, you're losing a bowler. The, some of the local bowlers haven't had a bowl yet. Alex Price, Tali McGrath, do you think we'll see them? Oh, certainly. Yeah, look, I think um, Susie obviously made the decision during the weekend to only bowl, I think, six bowlers at the end of the day, and I, I think that's great for two reasons. One, it shows that she's got great, great confidence in, in five bowlers to bowl their allotted overs, but also to think that we've still got players like Talia McGrath, Alex Price still to come. Susie obviously only bowled a couple of overs in the second game, so I think it shows the depth that we've got within the squad that you know we can hold bowlers back like that and, and wait for we've, till we've got really good matchups, which I think looking forward to the season, it's, it's what it's going to be about, is making sure we've got the best matchups to help us win games playing the Perth Scorchers as well, they haven't played a game yet, how do you, you know, go in not really knowing what sort of form they're in? Yeah, it's an interesting one, I'm, I'm certainly glad we've played a couple of games already, they obviously play uh, later today, which will be good to sort of keep an eye out and see how they go, we always know that they're a strong team, they've had great success, not just the females but the males as well, so we know that they're going to be really strong, I mean any team that's got Meg Lanning in it is, is going to go half decent, so yeah look, it'll be interesting to see how they go, obviously we've had a, a couple more games under our belt, but we're certainly looking forward to taking them on on the Sunday after we hopefully deal with the Hurricanes first. So Chloe Tryon on the weekend smashed him out of nowhere, she's, it feels like she's sort of come out of nowhere, what do you make of her and how I guess do we contain her this weekend? Yeah look, like, she's actually been on the international scene for a long time and, and we've seen a lot of her and the, the damage that she can do with the bat as well, so certainly was no surprise to see her clearing the fence the way she did and, and she is, she's a massive threat I think especially in the T20 format She's if she gets going she's very hard to stop but that's something that we have to, to think about in our game plans and which bowlers we use against her and how we bowl to her to make sure that she um, doesn't do similar damage to us.